We really want our kids to understand that we're not trying to punish them. We're just trying to help them figure out literally what is the consequence of this choice. I mean, it's a great word. We're not saying what's the punishment. Here's the three types of punishments. We're saying consequences because the reality is as human beings, we do make choices that have consequences. Sometimes there's positive consequences. Sometimes there's negative. And so if life isn't going to hand it out, then we need to create it and allow it to be as natural feeling as possible. Welcome to Raising Adults, the groundbreaking parenting podcast that starts with the end in mind. We're your co-hosts, Dina Thayer and Kira Dorian. We created future-focused parenting to take families from surviving to thriving. So join us as we help you stop raising kids and start raising adults. Today's episode of Raising Adults is brought to you by Manscaped. Future focused parents, you know that we are all about being proactive instead of reactive. And men, let's think about this for a minute. It's very important that when it comes to taking care of your nether regions, that you are proactive so that your partner is not reactive. And you know what? Manscaped has all the tools you need in order to be a future focused partner. Look what we did. Look what you did. And here's some of the nuts and bolts of how this works. See what I did there? Now, I've talked to you about some of the amazing features in Manscaped's robust line of products, but there's a few we haven't talked about yet. And one is the guard links. Everybody has a different preference on length, whether it's their beard, whether it's other things. And they do have additional guard lengths all the way from sizes one to four. There's also wireless charging on several of their trimmers, which is great because it includes electromagnetic induction. So that increases the battery life. So when you need your trimmer, it's not suddenly dead. Yep, no one wants to be left with a dead trimmer on an important evening. So if you are interested in checking out Manscaped's amazing line of products for yourself, if you're one of our future focused dads, or for your partner, it is after all the gift giving season, you can get 20% off and free shipping with our code RAISINGADULTS20. That's all one word, all caps, RAISINGADULTS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use our code RAISINGADULTS20 with RAISINGADULTS in all caps. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Hello, future focused parents. Welcome to another episode of Raising Adults podcast. We are glad to be back with you again for an episode all about consequences. Kira and I, in just a few moments, are going to break down the three types of consequences, how to use them, when to use them. And they're really, really helpful because I know a lot of parents sometimes find themselves grasping for what's appropriate in this instance. So we're going to help with that today. Yes, but before we do, we have some exciting news, and that is that we are doing a blowout sale before the end of the year. So if you have been wanting to get any of our online programs, we have many, this is the time to do it because everything is on sale for $5, except our flagship program, which normally retails at $57, is on sale for $10, and everything else is 5 bucks. So if you have been wanting to check out any of our online webinars and learn some of the things that we've got on there, we've got a whole program about anxiety, we've got a whole program about parenting on the same page, we've got a whole program on emotional intelligence and infant sleep. So if you've been interested in any of that, this is the time to do it. 5 bucks. it's all on sale, go in there fill up your cart and have yourself a very happy holiday season. (laughs) I love it. Okay. Here's another way you can help us before the end of the year. And then we're going to dive into the episode. I am so excited to see our social media accounts as they like creep up over time. And we didn't say anything to all of you guys, but Kira and I did privately like set the goal for 2021 of like, wouldn't it be cool if we got to a thousand Instagram followers by the end of the year? And you guys, we are so close. We are like less than 60 away. So, so seriously, even if just a few of you tell your friends, have them follow us, we will get there before the end of the year. And that's the hope. We'd love to hit the the happy 1K. So you can help us out with that. We ask you to consider doing that. It'd be super fun for us to get to see that fun number that we had like privately set that goal early in the year. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Let's talk about consequences. Let's do it. 
We love to talk about this. So we've been trying to, you know, look at what are some of the things that we talk about when we public speak that maybe we haven't actually fleshed out completely on the show, which is how we ended up covering things like the three pillars of the future-focused parenting philosophy and a few other topics that we've done in recent weeks. So we decided today we really wanted to make sure that we talk about those three types of consequences because we kind of touched on this in a bonus episode in like season one. But when we public speak, we talk about this all the time. time. So we thought, let's release a whole episode on consequences because as you said so many parents are not quite sure what the right way is to go what does it even look like what is an appropriate consequence and this is something that we we do a lot when we're speaking and coaching so it's a good Absolutely. one. Absolutely. It comes up a lot. And it's really important because as you all know if you've been listening for any length of time, we are actually fans of discipline when handled appropriately and we're fans of consequences. They really help kids with that sense of my parents have got me, I can count on them to be consistent. And that really breeds a lot of security in kids. So at the same time, though, parents often don't know which thing to reach for on their shelf of tools sometimes in the moment. And so we thought rather than I think we did answer a listener question on this at one point, but it was just a little quick episode. And so we wanted to flush this out a little bit more because so many people wonder, especially in the discipline area, what do I do? Well, and you see a lot of parents in that moment of not being sure what to do, they reach for the crazy consequence, right? Of like, that's it. You're never eating ice cream again. (laughs) Right. They reach for the empty threat that they could never follow through on. So let's actually start by talking about that. Why doesn't that work? And What is it about that that we want to kind of lean away from as we reach for these tools that actually do work? Well, that's such a great point. I mean, talking about what doesn't work first is important because what do you want to stay away from when you're looking for a consequence in a moment where you maybe need to do some redirection of some behavior you're not enjoying? And I think one of the reasons the empty threat is so risky is that when you don't follow through, shocking, your kids notice. Mm -hmm. So when you say we're suddenly not going on the family vacation to Disneyland and you still go, they really see that. And they view that as, oh, you know what? Mom didn't mean that or dad didn't mean that. And I think one of the really important implications we need to think about is that if we don't mean what we say in a consequence situation, how can they know we mean what we say in a situation where we're giving loving words, like I love you, or you're safe, or I've got you, or do you want to climb in my lap and tell me about that hard day you had? We want them to know they can believe our words. Yeah, absolutely. And those empty threats, while in the moment they feel very powerful, right? Like I can, I can make them behave the way I want them to, because I know they want to eat ice cream again. The reality is over time, it loses its power. And once we've kind of lost that power, now we're left with nothing, as opposed to making sure that when we are, that it's not even a threat. We shouldn't really be using discipline threateningly, right? We're using it as a way of helping kids start to learn cause and effect. When I make this choice, there's a fallout, whether that's positive or negative. If I make positive choices, I get positive fallout. When I make a negative choice, there's a negative fallout. And so that's really thinking of it more about teaching and less about threatening or trying to get your kids to do or behave the way you want them to, I think helps with this as well. That's a really good point. It's not the design isn't to be punitive in the first place. The design is to help the world make sense because we are our children's teachers for how to navigate the world later on. Yeah. The other thing I think with those big threats that's really hard is that kids are kids. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to get things wrong. They're learning and growing all the time. And so when we send the message that like, hey, if you make a mistake and in doing so you're kind of being age appropriate, I'm going to take all your ice cream away. That puts them in a really tricky position too of feeling like I can't slip up and fall down. Mm -hmm. Right. As opposed to if they know that they're always getting a natural or logical consequence as best they can, that our parents, my parents are always trying to make sure that it fits. Then when they slip up and fall down, it feels like it kind of makes sense instead of like, oh, my gosh, I could lose my big trip or I could lose all my ice cream for the rest of my life because of a kid mistake. Yeah. The the stakes become so unbelievably high high for them. Right. Yeah. And inappropriately high for yeah. what's, what the situation calls exactly. for. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. 
So should we go over the three types? Yeah, let's do that. Do you have a preference about which ones you get to share? (laughs) Well, I really like the first one. I've used it. Go for it. Yeah, share the first one. And I think I've talked about it on the show, so I'll try to come up with a different example. But the first type of consequence that we talk about when we share at schools or at speaking engagements is the natural consequence. And this is where the world delivers the consequence for you. And we love these ones because this takes away that power struggle dynamic. And we talk all the time about not only do we want you to pick your battles, we want you to avoid battles whenever possible. The point isn't a battle, right? And I think this takes that away, that conflict of it's between me and my parents. It's just, well, this is what this is what life did. Life doled out the consequence. So a good example of this is if you have a child who doesn't want to bring the jacket and now they're cold. Well, the weather made them cold. You didn't. So it wasn't the parent saying, that's it. If you don't bring your jacket, I declare you'll be freezing. (laughs) I will make you cold. Right? (laughs) We're just letting life do it. And I think that can be really powerful. And sometimes the natural consequence also means somebody else does it. So the story I told when Mark didn't get dressed for school, I didn't give a consequence, but he had one at preschool because his teacher was like, oh, you aren't ready for school. So you can't do your blah, 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 special job at the calendar or whatever it was. And I think those can be really powerful because kids start to see then, oh, I want to make a different choice. Not my parent made me make a different choice. Or threatened me to get me to make a different choice. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful when they come to that conclusion because of what happens with life. Yeah. And I think parents, what's really important about this first one is that you have to let life do it. Yeah. It's really tempting to run and quickly get them a coat. But sometimes this is where we have to sit back and allow them to, in a safe space, experience the consequence of their choice. Again, it's not like we're doing it, but to not try and fix it and make it better for them. Let them be cold for 15 minutes to maybe next time help them put those two pieces together so that they choose to bring a coat the next time. Whereas if you run inside and fix it and go, oh, I'll just go get your coat, they're not actually getting the opportunity to truly feel the connection between the choice and the outcome. Yes, that's really true. And it is really tempting. I think coming from a really good motivation, we as parents don't want our kids to have hard things happen and we don't want them to be cold or hurt or uncomfortable. And so it is easy to go, I'll I'll just bring the coat, you know, I'll just have it here in the car. And sometimes actually as a a lead in to this kind of a consequence, that can be a good model where maybe the parent has it on hand, the child regrets their decision before you're even at the location. Great. Then you can give them their coat. Yeah. But they've got to be able in these lower stakes things, especially if it's, you know, half day preschool, they're not going to freeze in two 15 minute recesses. So letting them bear the weight of that can be really important. I totally agree because you're right. I think there's a little bit of a temptation, no matter how strong of a parent you are to like kind of swoop in and fix it around the back door. (laughs) Yeah. We had it once with one of my kiddos lunch. They kept forgetting their lunch. Ah. And so I gave a warning. I was like, hey, you know, this has become a pattern and I'm not going to keep bringing your lunch every day. So I'm going to give you one more. And the next time that you forget your lunch, that will be the last time that I will bring it a makeup lunch to school. And that happened. And then they forgot it again. Mm. And they came home from school really sad and like cried in my arms like I was so hungry. And I felt awful. But at the same time, that child has never forgotten their lunch again. And they didn't die from not eating lunch one day. But they experienced like the fallout of if I don't make a choice to be responsible, then I don't have my lunch right? Instead of me as the parent just willy-nilly running their lunch to school every single time they forget it. Well, at a certain point, that's just enabling the problem, right? Yes. So allowing that fallout, but giving the warning so that, you know, same with the coat. Well, if you choose not to take your coat, sweetie, I need to warn you, you might be cold when we get to preschool. Mm -hmm. And if they still say they're not going to take their coat, well, then it's not like you haven't prepared them for the possibility of the, na- of the you know, natural consequence. Exactly. And I love what you said that then this child never did that again. It was the same with Mark. He was fully clothed for school. <laughs> henceforth. Henceforth. So they're powerful as well, the yeah. natural consequences. Very effective. 
Very effective. And like you said, it's not us. We're not the bad guys, mm -hmm. which is so great. That's my favorite kind of consequence when yes. you're not the bad guy. Okay, so let's talk about the second type of consequence, and that is a logical consequence. So sometimes life is not going to hand out the consequence for the child, and we actually have to go ahead and do that. And so wherever we can, we really want to pick something logical. So for example, if my child leaves their bike helmet out in the street and it gets run over by a car and broken, I am not going to offer the crazy consequence of that's it, you're never getting ice cream again, right? That doesn't make any sense. But what is logical is that my child should have to pay to replace the helmet that they were careless with. So finding something that fits. What is the logical fit? This happened, and therefore, for you to understand the implication of that, life's not going to do it, so I have to create a scenario in which you will understand logically what happened here. That's a great example, too. If something gets ruined or broken, having the child help make reparations. We also did this a lot with toys. If there were a lot of either squabbles over toys or being careless with toys, not treating them well, the toy took a break and mm -hmm. it went bye-bye. And it was, it, it was absolutely able to be earned back. It's not like we threw the toy in the garbage and said, or, or did the, the wild empty threat. That's it. No more toys for you ever. But it is, you know what? You're not playing with this toy in a way that's going to keep it from getting broken. So it's going to need to be put up for a while. And so it is, it's just looking for what matches the situation. And we fully recognize that doesn't always happen. So that's why we started with when you can let life do it. And when a logical consequence exists, choose that. Yeah. We really want our kids to understand that we're not trying to punish them. We're just trying to help them figure out, well, literally, what is the consequence of this choice? I mean, it's a great word. We're not saying what's the punishment. Here's the three types of punishments. We're saying consequences because the reality is, as human beings, we do make choices that have consequences. Sometimes there's positive consequences. Sometimes there's negative. And so if life isn't going to hand it out, then we need to create it and allow it to be as natural feeling as possible. Um, another example in our house was we had one kiddo who sometimes was destructive when they were tiny, um, would pull everything off their bookshelf in anger, and it was all over the floor. Well, you know, life isn't going to make them pick that up. I have to make them pick that up. And so that was the logical consequence was you took all the things off of your shelf. I now need you to put them all back. And unfortunately, that's taking up the time that we would have had for screen time. So that's a logical consequence that you don't get to have everything. You made a choice. What's the fallout? The fallout is it needs to be picked up. And unfortunately, that pickup time is happening during your screen time. That's a logical consequence. So yeah, that's number two. Did you know that there's an organizing app designed just for families? If you are starting to feel busy again and your calendar is filling up with more events and kids activities than all of last year combined, do yourself a favor and get the Cozy app. Cozy is the number one organizing app that families use to juggle all the things, school schedules, practices, meetings, doctor's appointments, even a workout or a date night. And it was named a must have app for a better life by the Today Show. With Cozy, you'll be all set up so everyone knows who is doing what, when and where and it even sends emails every morning with the day's agenda. No more missed pickups or double bookings. And here's how it works. So Cozy tracks everyone's schedules and events in one place with a shared color-coded calendar right in the app. Cozy will even remind other family members about events so you don't have to. And it's super easy to get started. You can even pull in events from your family's personal calendars or work and school calendars. The best part, it's free. Just download Cozy Family Organizer from the App Store, that's C-O-Z-I, to get the free app today. And Cozy helps with a ton of other things on your plate too. There's a shared grocery list feature, which lets the whole family add items in real time. So you'll never find yourself at the store without your list. It's always right on your phone and up to date. And if you need help figuring out dinner, there's even a place to store recipes and plan meals ahead of time. So use Cozy to discover new recipes inside the app or save recipes from across the web. And you can meal plan for the entire week this way. You can even add all those ingredients you find directly to the Cozy shopping list. It's all free in Cozy, just download it from the App Store. That's C O Z I to get the free app today. That's number two. And number three, 
when these first two are not available, we reach for the currency consequence. And this one, we may need to flesh out a little bit because first of all, what does that even mean? So currency is whatever is of value to your child. What is a privilege they have or what is something that's really important to them, something they value that you can leverage in this situation? That's basically what it is. Whether that is screen time, whether that is a play date, whether that is a special toy that they like to use and only get to use sometimes, whatever it might be, we as parents need to not be afraid of leveraging what's important to them so that they can see, wow, that course of action really didn't serve me well. And I probably don't want to choose it again. I think where this one becomes challenging is and I'm guessing this has come up for you as well in parent coaching, as we sometimes hear, my child doesn't have a currency. There's nothing they care about. And the truth is I would challenge that. First of all, almost always you can find something they care about. It might not be an obvious thing. Maybe your family doesn't do screens at all. So you don't have this easy thing you can grab for screen time or you don't do dessert. So it's not like, oh, you didn't finish your dinner and we've been really working on taking the no thank you by I can't offer you dessert. Maybe that's not a choice in your home. I get that. Everybody has those different dynamics. However, if you look and look closely enough, you almost always can find something that does matter to them where if you took it away for a time or weren't able to offer it even that day, it would matter and it would send an important message. I don't know but if you hear that, but sometimes that's the pushback I get on this one. Yeah. And I think oftentimes it comes from a lot of parents not realizing that certain things that are given in their homes don't need to be. So and They are a privilege. They're, yeah. Video games are absolutely a privilege. Screen time is a privilege. Stories at bedtime. Yes. Are a privilege. That's my favorite one. A lot of people don't think about that. You know, tucking your child in, loving them, snuggling them absolutely should be a given. That is loving, connecting, making your child feel safe, all of that. But five stories at bedtime, those are privileges. So, you know, using it could end up being logical. Like, well, you goofed around getting ready for bed and now we don't have enough time for our stories. That's an example of a logical consequence. But it could also be oftentimes I feel like the currency consequences are really around like behavior and treatment of others where you can't do something logical. Like if, if one of my kids hits the other kid, well, there is no logical consequence because they can't. I can't be like, now you hit them back, yeah. <laughs> right? I think that that's where we see currency a lot is in that situation where it's like there, there isn't anything that's logical. So now I just have to have you take a moment to feel something about what just happened and the loss of privilege and recognizing, again, I talk about this on the show all the time. We are a team. We work together. We treat each other well. We operate under these family values. And when someone's outside of that, well, then some of your privileges in the home might need to go away because you're not operating in a healthy, happy way in our home, right? We're not treating someone well. Well, I don't think that then you should be getting video games or five stories at bedtime or whatever it is. So this is where we start to implement currency. But I agree. I think that a lot of parents, there's so much that's given to children these days. And I sound like a hard ass when I say that, but, you know, and, and you know, like I'm all about emotional wellness and and parenting with empathy and love. And I really believe we can do that and recognize that a lot of what we give our kids are privileges and helping our kids understand what's actually supposed to be a given and what are things that you've just come to accept and know in our home as loving gifts to you, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that actually I have every right to take away if I feel like you're not a loving participant in our home. Yes. Yeah, I would really encourage listeners and parents, if you are struggling with what is a privilege that I could leverage in this way, we actually did do, you might have to help me, Kara, I don't know if it was a spin based on a question, or, but we did do an episode about what are privileges that might not be those obvious, you know, the extra snack or the screen time or whatever. So kind of beyond what we might jump to. And those are real, that's a really helpful episode if you're looking for, you know, what could I leverage in this way? I think other things that we forget our privileges are some of, especially in the early years, some of the independence pieces, mm -hmm. doing things by yourself. If I've had to referee 
a sibling squabble as we're getting out the door, I'm not going to be able to offer you the opportunity to buckle your own car seat today. Mm -hmm. That takes extra time. You know, it can even be something as small as that. And a lot of three, four-year-olds really value that independence. So that would even speak to them like, oh, that wasn't worth wasting time arguing over whose socks were whose. I really like to get in my seat, buckle it myself, and I don't want to lose that. And so it's, it does require some thinking outside of the box, but I think it's well worth it because we can still offer some feedback when there are these behaviors in the home that need some redirection and need some help. We have actually usually a pretty wide variety of things we can choose from, but they're just not maybe what we would first think of. And I think with all three of these, what's really important to remember is what Dina and I talk about all the time. We're all about boundaries with lots of room for feelings in the middle. You're going to see feelings from your kids. And guess what? They are allowed to feel those feelings. It doesn't mean you change the boundary. Mm -hmm. These consequences are so important. Again, they're not punitive. It's not to shame your child. It's not to make them feel like they're a bad kid. It's to help them understand that when they get out into the real world, guess what? There are a lot of consequences for the choices that we make. And it's why we're seeing a lot of this kind of 20-something generation right now struggle because they didn't necessarily get those same Mm -hmm. boundaries and consequences. And so there's an expectation of I should be able to kind of move through the world how I want without any fallout. And that's just not how the world works, or at least it's not how it should work. <laughs> and you know, and you know what's so fascinating is all three of these consequences even happen in adulthood. So mm-hmm. I think parents who think it's not loving or it's not kind to administer these are really not thinking about how the world works. If even now, if I forget my lunch and maybe I have a day at work that's stacked full of meetings, I am going hungry because there isn't time to go get something else. Mm-hmm. If a child isn't playing with their toy car well and it goes up for a while, same thing. If I'm not driving my car carefully and I get in a crash, my car will go away like while it's being repaired or maybe forever if it's totaled. And the same thing for the use of time. I can, I can, I mean, it's a little bit like a natural consequence because it's like the world imposes it on, on me, but some of my ability to do things I enjoy, like relax or take a bath or watch a show or read a book. If I'm not managing my time well during the day, that goes away. I've lost my currency, the thing that's important to me, that little bit of time for self-care. All three of these things happen in life. So to me, the other thing that's challenging when when a parent says, oh, but it's not loving or they kind of have this view, I, I want to really bust that myth that this isn't loving because actually this helps your kids not be surprised by the way the world works. And I think that's a gift we give them to say, oh, well, that makes sense. I wasn't careful with that and it broke. Yeah. If they've been experiencing that their whole life, it's not a surprise. Right. Then from a younger age, developing the critical thinking skills to start thinking about, if I make this choice, what might the consequence look like, good or bad, right? So we're teaching critical thinking skills, again, as long as this is done lovingly, because we're not saying that you scream at your kid and say, that's it. Here's your consequence. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about lovingly helping our children learn and develop the critical thinking skills. And I would go so far as to piggyback off of what you said, which was spot on, that all of this comes in adulthood. Guess what? But actual currency consequences happen in adulthood, like money, (laughs) like real currency, right? If I park, if I don't check the parking signs well and I get a ticket or I'm speeding and I get a ticket, there's a financial implication there. I literally lose my currency. Yes. So I think that it's, it's really about shifting your view in two areas. One is exactly what Dina just said, that in doing this, we are helping them develop their preparation for the real world and develop the critical thinking skills that they're going to need in the real world to be responsible and make great choices. And then the second thing is we're creating a set of boundaries that make them feel safe and that let them know that we are a functional family that works together and that at the end of the day, they are still the child and we are that team captain. And that's the other part of this that's really important not from an authoritarian type perspective, more from a, I'm here to coach you and guide you. And this is part of how I do that. Yes. 
because we have been there and our experience brings something to the table. And so keeping that dynamic where it's okay for the parent to be in charge, of course, doing that in a loving way. I think even, even to the car seat example, which I used myself, I would be saying out loud while I did it, I know it is super frustrating that you don't get to buckle your own car seat today, you know, because they're flailing and arching their back. And But I'm still the one doing it. I think when you get that emotional reaction, we have to remember that doesn't mean you picked a bad consequence or that it was the wrong one. We don't. I love that you said earlier, if you get feeling feedback from the boundary, it doesn't mean you change the boundary, but we can definitely talk through those feelings. Like I had to honor that and validate that. Oh, I see you're really upset that you're not Mm -hmm. getting to do this today. We talk that through, but I'm still the one buckling because this is what I said was going to happen because we ran out of time because of blah, blah, blah. So I think that's, that's really key. And it is a perspective shift. This is a loving thing you do for your children. And there are a lot of options for you. So don't feel frustrated. It, there's a lot of things. And check out that episode too, because we definitely kind of cover some of the things that are a little more unconventional. Yeah. I think it's called Beyond. It's a coaching call, Beyond Screen Time and Video Games or something. Privileges, thinking about privileges beyond. Type in Beyond and Privileges in the search yeah. engine and like it'll the, show up. Yeah. I feel like one was about food and one was about screen time. It was like Beyond Dessert and Video Games or something like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I th- I think that's I think that's really true and I yeah. and I think I love what you said about the feelings cuz that's really important. And again, this is a place where normalizing is really good. I use this all the time. I forever normalized for my kids like, "Oh, I know, getting a consequence is the worst." I remember I got one once and I would share my story to the point where my kids started asking me, hey, could you tell me about a time when you got a consequence? Because it made them feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't trying to be a mean parent and I've been through it too, but it helped me learn and it helped me grow. So making sure that as they're feeling those feelings, we're walking through those three ends. But the nurture here is actually the boundary. It doesn't mean you change it, but we do want to show up for their feelings. They are allowed to have them. Absolutely. Well, I'm really glad we talked about that because it's one that we haven't taken a deeper dive into. And hopefully for all of you FFPs out there, that was helpful and might give you some ideas of other resources that you can use. And now you'll kind of know the three types and when which one might be appropriate. And hopefully that was helpful for you to dive into a little bit more as you're figuring out boundaries in your own family or maybe even needing to tweak them if they haven't been there. So just a reminder Hop on. If you haven't already, please follow us on social. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. The handle is at Future Focus Parenting. We're particularly stoked that we're getting close to a thousand followers on Instagram. So if you don't mind maybe sharing the content with a friend or maybe a fellow parent who you know might benefit from finding out when our episodes drop or seeing those great parenting quotes, whatever it might be, we are super close and would love your help getting to a thousand followers by the end of the year. And the blowout sale. Don't forget the blowout sale. If you have been wanting to take advantage of some of our online programs, we have programs talking about these very topics. Uh, do check it out. Everything's on sale for five bucks, and our big flagship program is on sale for 10. Futurefocusedparenting.com. Click on digital resources. Perfect gift for the expectant parent in your life or for yourself if you want a deeper dive into some of these things that we talk about on the episodes. Have a wonderful week. We look forward to being back with you next time. Raising Adults is produced by Kira Dorian and Dina Thayer and recorded partially in Kira's laundry room, partially in my coat closet. Editing by Allison Preisinger. Music by Seattle band Hannah Lee. Thanks for listening.